AP statisticians. Hope you guys are having a great day. Um, we are moving on to 5.3, and that's in the practice of statistics, chapter 5, section 3. We're going to talk about conditional probability and independent events. Um, so our SWOBAT is uh, being able to um, use a tree diagram to determine chance behavior. Um, use the general multiplication rule to solve probability questions, determine which two events are independent, um, determine whether two events are independent, and then find the probability that an event occurs. Well, no, that's not true. We're not going to do the last one. So we've already done that. Uh, we did that in the last video, in 5.2.2. Um, okay, so uh, conditional probability is basically just probability of something given that something else has already happened um, or that you know more information. So like the probability of um, rolling a six given that the last roll was also a six, right? Rolling a die, um, the chance of getting a six the first time and chance then getting a six the second time. Those are independent events um, and therefore they're not going to affect the probability of the other one occurring. Um, but maybe something like um, I have a deck of cards. Do I have a deck of cards? I don't have a deck of cards with me right now. I should have one. Um, anyways, I have a deck of cards and I remove um, the top card and it's an ace. Well, now that I've seen that, and I, if I remove it, what's the probability of the next card being an ace? Um, so that might be uh, an instance where conditional probability uh, occurs. And that would be a case where those events are not independent. They're dependent. Okay, so notation, um, this probability of A, and then that vertical line B. That means the probability of A given B. Um, and so the formula for that, this is in your formula sheet that you get on the test, so you don't need to like memorize this, but you do need to know what it is and how to use it, okay? So the probability of A given B is the probability of A and B happening at the same time. So the probability of A and B occurring divided by the probability of B. And order does matter. Okay, so you're dividing by the probability of the second thing occurring. Order does matter. Um, so there you go. Okay, so the general multiplication rule for probability is um, literally the exact same thing as the conditional probability, except you take that prob probability of B, so you take the denominator and multiply it to the other side and you end up with just a different form of the same formula. So the pro that, you know, because when you do that, right, your probability of B is cancel, and you get the probability of A and B is the probability of B times the probability of A given B. Okay, just, yeah, it's not bad. Literally the same thing on the formula sheet. Now, like I said before, independent events are events that um, knowing that one has happened does not change the probability of the second one happening. So like rolling a die once and looking for five and then rolling a die again and getting a different number. Um, the fact that you know the outcome of the previous die has absolutely no effect on the pro probability of the second die. Um, so those are independent events. Um, and if you have two events that are independent, A and B, then the probability of A given B is just the probability of A because given that B is true and it doesn't change anything, then it's just equal to the probability of A. So um, what that does is it changes this original for formula up here, right? The probability of A and B is the probability of A given B times the probability of B. So if they're independent, then um, this portion of it, the probability of A given B, just equals the probability of A. So if you have independent events, the probability of A and B is the probability of A times the probability of B. Yay! And last but not least, we have tree diagrams. Tree diagrams um, are basically, they're just another way to model like a sample space for some sort of event, some sort of probability process um, that includes like 
multiple different outcomes. Um, and so I'll kind of show you what that looks like, but um, you typically take like one event and uh, so this is kind of what a tree diagram looks like. Do, 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 do. Um, you usually do it to the side. But anyways, I'll show you an example of one. Um, it's kind of nice. Uh, and also, just as a heads up, people who, there are certain like probability questions that people try to like take shortcuts and not draw a tree diagram. And I've never seen someone get it right without doing a tree diagram. There's cer certain problems. Um, so I highly recommend you using these because it really helps you like analyze and like organize how you think about probability in a particular problem. Okay, so uh, let's go back to our data that we had from last section um, about the elections at our school. So here's all of your data. Um, okay, so question one, we're going to talk a little bit about the conditional probability. What if we knew somebody was a middle schooler? What, so say you randomly select a student and I tell you, hey, FYI, they're a middle schooler. What's the probability that person is a Trump supporter? Well, um, hopefully you could kind of like figure it out uh, just from your brain and using a two-way table. So I guess we are kind of doing that first thing. Anyways, that I told you to cross off up at the top. <laughs> Anyways, so you, I guess you can erase that. <laughs> My bad. Anyways, um, so if we know someone is a, a middle schooler, that means you're only looking at this particular area here, right? All of your middle schoolers. So I know that I have middle schoolers. Um, and then what, given that the person's a middle schooler, what's the probability that that person is a Trump supporter? So you're going to have 23 out of the total number of middle schoolers, and that would just be your, your conditional probability. It's not bad. Now, just for specifics, let's do it with the formula um, and with the notation. So what we're really asking is the probability of a Trump supporter given that they're a middle schooler. Okay. And the way you find that is with that formula that I gave you up at the top, um, which is the probability that someone is both a Trump supporter and a middle schooler divided by the probability that someone is a middle schooler. Okay. And so you actually end up with the same information, right? Probability uh, someone's a Trump and middle schooler, that's 23 out of the total, which I think is like what was it, 216 or something like that? Sorry, I added wrong. 246. Okay, so 23 out of 246. And then you divide that by the probability of somebody being a middle schooler, which is 116 out of 246. And then when you actually like divide that out, your 246 cancel, and you end up with 23 over 116. Okay, so that's how you'd use it with the formula. Okay, try the next question. What's the probability that someone is a high schooler given their Clinton supporter? So I randomly select a person and I tell you, hey, FYI, they're a Clinton supporter. What's the probability that that person happens to be a high schooler? Um, so go ahead, try it, pause it, whatever you need to do. Um, given that they're a Clinton supporter, that means that we're dividing by um, the total number of Clinton supporters, so that's 161, and so that's my denominator. You could also use it with formula as well. Um, I just, if I have a two-way table, I like to do it with my brain because it makes more sense to me than the formula. Um, and out of that many people who are Clinton supporters, there are 84 that are high schoolers, so my total is 84 out of 161. That is the probability that someone is a high schooler given that they are a Clinton supporter. Okay, so for each of the chance processes below, determine whether the events are independent. One, shuffle standard decker. Okay, so you go ahead, try these things. The thing that's going to be the hardest, I think, for you is number three um, because what's important about it is like the mathematical sense of the word independent, um, in which case you need to use that information from above 
right, that the probability of A and B equals the probability of A times the probability of B if the things are independent. So what you need to do for that last problem is actually calculate what's the probability of A times the probability of B and see if it's the same as the probability of A and B. Because if they're independent, they will be the same number. If they're not independent, if they're dependent, then, um, then they won't. Okay, so go ahead, try those problems on your own, and then see the answers. Okay, so the first one's independent because you replaced the card to the deck, so first event doesn't change the probability of the second. Um, the second question, they don't replace the card back into the deck, so the probability of getting a heart the second time changes, no matter what the first card is. Um, and then the last one, those two are independent um, because what I did is I found the probability that uh, a person is female and right-handed, which is that 18 out of the total 28 students. Um, and then I found the individual probabilities of being female and right-handed, so that's 21 out of 28 and 24 out of 28. And then you multiply them together, right? It's the probability of female times the probability of right-handed is 21 over 28 times 24 out of 28, which does end up being the same number. Um, so those are independent events. Um, cool. Okay. So moving on to tree diagrams. So I think this will be really, really helpful for you. Okay. So the reason that it's actually really helpful is because you can use a tree diagram whether the events are independent or dependent, so it doesn't really matter. You just have to keep track of your probabilities. So um, example one says use a tree diagram to find the probability of getting at least two heads when tossing a coin three times. Okay, so you could set up your um, your tree di diagram like this. So you have your first toss. I'm going to use screen highlighter. Okay, so your first toss you could get either heads or tails. And then on the line that has the event, I put the probability of it happening. So 0.5 of getting a head and 0.5 to get tails. Okay, then the next roll, I could also get a head or a tail. So I set up my probability like for the next one would be um, head or tail there and head or tail for the second one. Okay, so currently the path where you go, whoops, where you go down the 0.5 t to the next one would be two tails in a row. So you've got tail and then a tail. Um, so let's finish that. Just fill out the probabilities. You have one more toss. So fill that out real quick. Okay, so um, the probability of one particular route is the product of all of the probabilities, individual probabilities. So, for example, if I was talking about the probability of this, um, ah, sorry, we're talking about like this route. So a head, then a tail, then a tail, right? The probability of that thing occurring is five point five times point five times point five, so point one two five. Now that's the same in this case because all of those probabilities are the same. So every single path is going to be have the probability of happening at 0.125. And all of these things added up at the end, those are all your possible combinations, so that should add up to 1. Okay, so we're curious about all of the paths that give us at least two heads. So that would be head, head, head. That would be head, head, tail. That would be head, tail, head. That would be two. Head, tail, tail is only one head. Uh, tail, head, head, tail, head, tail, nope, tail, tail, head, nope, tail, head, tail, nope. Okay, so there are one, two, three, and four different different places where you could get um, two or more heads. So the probability of that occurring is you just add them all up. So 0.125 plus 0.125 plus 0.125 plus 0.125 gets you your probability. Okay, so now go ahead, try number two. Um, using a tree diagram. All right, so here's the answer to number two. This one, notice that they're not independent events, so the probability changes. So if I select Trump the first time, I get 59 out of 246. The second time, I've removed a Trump supporter, so now it's 58 out of 245. 
So um, that's the only way you'll get two Trump supporters, so your probability is 0.0568. Done.